But without further ado, we're going to kick it off today with the dope dad himself. That's right. Rico Lameet. When he is not out in the streets house hunting, you can find him gang banging with the internet cartel at his own crib right now. And that's why he's having to have to move. That's right. It is the dope dad himself, Rico Lameet. So my story today is coming from a uh, marijuana moment, and it is congressional bill punishing illegal marijuana grows aims to protect consumers from pesticides, sponsors say. So nothing brings Republicans and Democrats together like an opportunity to lay down a little prohibitionist law and order in an effort to fool the American people into believing they actually work while they're on the clock. A bipartisan duo of California congressional lawmakers have File, uh, refiled a bill to combat illicit cannabis grows on federal lands. A move they say is intended to protect consumer health, uh, consumers' health from banned pesticides used in unregulated cultivation. Democratic Representative Scott Peters reached around the aisle Friday to partner up and do a little tag team action with Doug LaMalfa, a man better known for posting prohibitions prohibitionist thirst trap videos on Facebook rather than doing a productive or having a productive voting record. Uh, he got together to announce uh, the aim of their bar bipartisan targeting and offsetting, offsetting, offsetting existing illegal contaminants or the toxic act is a uh, consumer safety and environmental protection. In a statement, Peter said no buyer should be unknowingly consuming marijuana contaminated by dangerous banned pesticides. That's why Congressman LaMalfa and I introduced the Toxic Act to go after these illegal cartel-linked grow operations on federal lands. The effects go well beyond the end user, endangering multiple species and, posing, and posing a threat to the forest service agents who are tasked with cleaning up these lands. For the article, a rare shared point of concern for industry advocates, stakeholders, and regulators is the broader concern about the environmental damage associated with illicit grows, where banned pesticides are sometimes used and can damage the ecosystem by polluting water and soil and poisoning wildfire, wildlife. Uh, but while advocates argue the carrot approach of creating regulated markets for adults and, pa uh, and patients with products subject to testing and other compliance policies as the solution, Peters and LaMalfa both prefer the stick. You guys might remember a throwback to LaMalfa back in July 2021, where he had the video of him and some um, Forest Service uh, members just bulldozing a bunch of illegal grows and him saying that nothing smells better in the morning like the, the as a diesel fuel exhaust. LaMalfa took a break from Bob the Builder cosplay last week to uh, tout the revisited legislation's consumer protection goals, saying it's meant to prevent exposure to banned pesticides endangering residents who inadvertently consume them. The act's first round of voting turned out to be a bit too toxic for adva uh, to advance last session, but the duo's optimistic the revamped two-tiered version will fare better. Or will fare better. Excuse me, I'm, chill, I'm dying today. Uh, the bill will provide up to $250 million in funding for the U.S. Forest Service over five years uh, to remediate areas where they say banned pesticides were used for illegal cannabis cultivation and also increased criminal penalties for people who have used these prohibited chemicals, charging offenders as they would smugglers with maximum penalties of up to $250,000 in fines and up to 20 years in prison. Historical data tied to ratcheting up these penalties has shown to do pretty much nothing as far as slowing down illegal drug trade activity in America. And a quick glance back at the 80s and 90s will show It'll, what it will do is deepen the pockets of more dangerous operators willing to corner a higher risk game market and separate families of loved ones for decades caught in the middle with not many life choices available beyond participating in low level positions to put food on their own tables. Sounds to me like a thinly veiled attempt to waste a quarter billion dollars of our hard earned tax money on a war on drugs part two rebranded. Nothing like a little toxic bipartisanship to whitewash the sins of yesterday, right? I'm Rico Lamid, the dopest dad on the street, and I'd like to hear from you guys on this. What do you think about this, Jason? Bipartisanship uh, crackdown on illegal growers. I mean, 
these illegal growers are grow growing on our national forests and and siphoning off a lot of our water and whatnot. So 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 more power to them. More power to the uh, the right, but twenty the, years. Really. What's that? What's that? Twenty what's years that? penalty, really? I mean, I'm I mean, just saying. 20 years penalty for growing. Well, the, the, I mean, Todd, but the penalty is supposed to make people deter them from trying to do this. And so so I ha I don't have a problem with, with saying that the maximum penalty is 20 years because you're going to have a number of repeat offenders over and over again, and maybe some of them need, do need 20 years. Well, for the most part, people getting sentenced to 20 years are just getting bumped back to Mexico also because it's mostly cartel growers in the in the forests. That part too, yeah. and it's it's a complex issue because I support anybody that there there is actually a real like if you ever lived in Mendo or spent time in Mendo Humboldt, there's a real problem with them putting these forever chemicals all over and they go right into the watershed. They're decimating salmon populations, they're decimating trout populations, decimating deer populations up there. And you know, for me, like I moved out of L.A. to it was stupid, but I moved out of L.A. to go up to Mendo and live little house on the prairie and and go hiking and explore nature and. Once you get up there, you realize you can't get anywhere off the road because everywhere there's growers protecting their shit with machine guns. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, we just need to federally legalize drugs, take the money out of the hands of the drug cartels and rewrite this whole thing. Right. I think. Yeah, 20 years is, is, is very excessive. I don't know. I don't, I, don't, I don't think it's necessarily excessive if you're growing on federal land. Because you're you're obviously trying to skirt the system by not paying any rent, not paying any bills, stealing water X, Y, and Z, and so therefore you have pretty much zero overhead is set for your employees and the infrastructure that you bring to set up your grow. So I don't really see a problem with the twenty years. But okay, mm. so this is a stupid thing. So if I'm an organic grower on federal land, I can get around this law because this is just about pesticides, using pesticides on federal land. No, also clear cutting and all kinds of other practices. And people should no, be I'm talking federal about, no, land. no, 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 no. I'm talking about this specific piece of legislation. Oh, okay. It's just about it's awesome. pesticides. That's the only where this 20 year ban would come into effect. Either I don't like this whole stupid thing, frankly. Yeah. Um, it's, 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 I, I, think I get it's where they're trying to go with their messaging side to try and get the right on board, but these guys are just closet environmentalists and don't want to come out and say that they believe in global warming. That's Doug Lamolfa's in the global uh, warming closet. That's what's going on here. I, don't know, you guys, I, don't, if, I think if we, if we kill all the salmon and the trout, we're going to have a lot less food to eat, you guys. I think one of the things yeah, you I probably just have to remember is you cannot eat factories. You can't eat stocks and bonds. Like You have to eat food, and you can't breathe money or gold. You have to breathe oxygen. So us environmentalists trying to keep the life support systems of our planet going actually makes some logical sense if you start to think. That you need to eat I, food, I have no problem with environmentalist Ma Matthew St. Germain. I'm saying these crazy guys, I don't just their messaging and what they're trying to propose here when it's what they bullshit. really should be pushing is for legalization. So, yeah. you know, they can put labeling standards on everything for if you really want to can protect consumers from pesticides, that's where you need regulations. So, but oh, we're just gonna go after the cartels in the federal lands for their pesticide use uh, what i don't know what the hell this is about this is just the is dumbest just, thing possible and i think that is why this did not advance anywhere because it's stupid i mean it's just about protecting our national forest and i think everybody oh, police. Protect, uh, well, i think most people really don't have an idea of the scale like unless you've ever been out to the emerald triangle really and, true, and, and gotten in a plane and flown around and seen what they've done like you have no clue what's going on like there's literally mass clear cutting stream erosion, the destruction of, again, the salmon and the trout stocks, which we need for food. So what I would say is like, like do some Googling and take, take a look at some satellite pictures and read into what's going on on the West Coast. Again, I think legalization is the proper way to handle this, but also anybody who's dumping diesel fuel and pesticides in the national land where they're growing their wheat or not should, should definitely be prosecuted. See what I'm saying? I think. But yeah, I'm a hippie, I'm man. That. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm with you on that, Matthew. Mean, Look at that, I'm you saying. guys building bridges oh, right oh, there. And I am not an environmentalist at, in, in the slightest. I do not believe in global warming or any of that shit. Okay, in the white, 80s. I'm going to call you white Gucci, white Gucci flip flop from now on, bro. No, no, no. In, <laughs> white in Gucci the 80s, I mean, I mean, white, white Gucci when he's in Florida, he does wear flip flops sometimes. Oh, slides. Got him. But that's when they call me Gucci Blanco. Oh, I like it, man. Yeah. 
comments. Yeah. Anybody else want to comment on? That? I think it's I just. Uh, I think it's bullshit. I don't think it's gonna pass. Um, I don't think it's gonna pass in the second round either. It's not going just, anywhere. Like, yeah, just veiling it behind. Oh yeah, we're going to save save the environment. It's just bullshit. So. Yeah. Shout out to Johnny Smash here on the West Coast. We champion the flip flop. That's right. Let's go to a co- quick commercial and we'll be right back. No socks. How's it going, guys? Saman Razani coming to you from Green Street here with Jason Beck smoking on the best weed in the world. Did you know that we have an audio-only version of our podcast available on Apple, Google, Amazon, iHeartRadio, and Spotify? Tune in now and check it out. All right. He is known to many for smoking the best weed in the world while openly supporting some of the worst politicians in the country. But hey, <laughs> it's all green at the end of the day. Up movie. next, <laughs> you know who it is. is Jason Beck. Oh, yeah. Good morning, Rico. And I don't know if you guys remember last week, but uh, we, we covered this uh, SQ820, this vote out of Oklahoma. And I mentioned to you guys that if it didn't pass, that there was going to be some steeper regulations coming in. Today, my story has to do, it turns out my predictions are right, because my story alludes to exactly that. Because officials say SQ820 vote was a mandate for tougher regulation on medical marijuana in Oklahoma. That's right. In the lead up to the uh, recreational marijuana vote, One of Mike Dabrowski's biggest worries was that it would pass by a narrow margin. But when Oklahoma voters overwhelmingly rejected state question 820 on Tuesday, the state representatives breathed a sigh of relief. The morning after, he described a similar mood among his colleagues inside the Capitol. In their eyes, there was no equivocation. In a quote, they say, I certainly feel like it was a vote affirming the changes that we have made and expecting us to continue to limit what we have now, said Dabrowski, Republican from Kingfisher. And he also says, it definitely was a mandate against any expansion. The state question failed in every one of Oklahoma's 77 counties statewide. Over 61% of voters said no. And in a quote, many of us feared that the passage of SQ820 would create a whole new obstacle for regulators and our law enforcement who are already overextended with the challenges created by the medical industry and the illicit market, Dabrowski said. I like his last name, Dabrowski. Uh, For the most part, lawmakers wanted to wait until the March 7th vote to make any significant changes to Oklahoma's marijuana laws. However, several bills have quietly made their way through the legislative process and are still able to become law. Some of those bills would put limits on THC potency, require a qualifying medical condition for medical marijuana patients under 18, and allow cities to adopt zoning restrictions on cannabis businesses, close loopholes to prevent illegal, uh, illegal land ownership, and require doctors who recommend medical marijuana to complete specific training. Oklahoma is a better place for this state State question failing, said State Senator Jessica Garvin, Republican from Duncan. I think the overwhelming results are also a clear sign that Oklahomans are not happy with the current medical marijuana program and want it to be reformed. That is why this session I have introduced a number of bills that will close loopholes in illegality activity, further protect children, and make the program a true medical marijuana program, not recreational marijuana light which it is now, she says. Even Governor Kevin Stitt echoed the same sentiment in a press conference on Friday. The governor said Oklahomans are experiencing fatigue with the medical marijuana industry. The quote, I don't think anybody expected it to be defeated that bad, but as I was traveling the state, I knew Oklahomans didn't want it, Stitt said. They were so tired of a dispensary on every single corner, so clearly... We don't want a recreational, and I think there's an appetite to tighten up the medical side as well. The governor said Oklahomans have a big heart and that if marijuana helps medically patients, then they should be able to participate in the program. But we don't believe that anybody with a hangnail should be able to get a medical marijuana card, Stitt said. A prominent advocate 
of the medical marijuana industry, however, says uh, that the state officials are misreading voters' intentions. In a quote, it's the program that we have that people are happy with. <clears throat> they don't want to change it, said Jed Green, director of Oklahoma's for Responsible Cannabis Action. In a quote, if the governor and legislature uh, goes in and makes the mistakes with this misread and they push for limiting conditions or restricting telemedicine and taking access away, the knee-jerk reaction is going to be another adult use bill, he says. Green criticized the regulation and the tax structure in SQ820, saying that with a better proposal, there are enough votes in Oklahoma to adopt a recreational marijuana bill. And the best thing they can do is just to let this uh, let this thing settle down, let enforcement agencies catch up and let this thing stabilize, he said. If they go in and if they look to limit individual access, that will be the the, the trigger that will pass adult use in the state because then everyone has something to lose. Other legislation that could advance in the next few weeks would permanently prohibit a business from acquiring a medical marijuana license if they intentionally don't pay the state. House Bill 2095 also includes a provision that would ban cannabis growers from knowingly hiring undocumented immigrants and limit the number of state licensed grow operations to a thousand at any one time. As of February 8th, more than 7,000 grower licenses had been approved by the Oklahoma Medical Marijuana Court, although it's unclear whether the state has that many active farms when it became clear that SQ820 would fail late Tuesday. The campaign's leadership told supporters at a rally it was now up to the governor and lawmakers to preserve and strengthen the medical marijuana program. Campaign director Michelle Tilly also called on state officials to continue the state's criminal justice reform efforts to make sure people aren't sent to jail for minor infractions of the marijuana law. Currently, someone found in possession of a small amount of marijuana without a medical license can still face up to a year in jail and a thousand dollar fine or a similar fine without jail time if they can simply state a medical reason for having it if the state question had passed individuals already in the justice system for marijuana possession could have requested to have their sentences expunged and in a quote it is in your hands and we challenge you to do it and and we are here in good faith to work with you to make those changes happen till he said well i'll tell you what it's just going to go down in Oklahoma, and I'm going to sit here with my popcorn and watch it all develop. And this is Jason Beck reporting for the High at Nine News. What do y'all think about this?